The topic today is how to use metrics in your context. And the first question for our panelists is, to, could you talk about the context within which you engage with open source community health metrics? And maybe on the first time that you answer, also introduce who you are, where you're from, so we understand your context. I guess I will start. Um, hi everyone, good morning. My name is Eric Obancha. I work for the Open Infrastructure Foundation as Senior Manager of Community and Ecosystem. So my context is the, uh, let's say, pure open source space. Uh, what our foundation does is we are supporting open source software development communities. And uh, as part of my job role, I'm both looking into community management at large, as well as I'm a community manager for one of our projects. It's called Starting X. Um, but not going into the details of that project right now, um, really is the, uh, when it comes to metrics and health metrics, and I myself often refer to them as sustainability metrics, um, we would like to understand the dynamics of our communities and the ecosystem around them, because it's not just about the community itself, but also um, all the other individuals, organizations, companies who are doing anything with the, uh, the work and artifacts that our communities are working on. And we also would like to understand how the communities are operating, whether they are struggling with anything, whether people are happy, they are efficient, and whether or not they are able to work towards the goals that they have. So um, we obviously started to look into um, trends. So when, when we talk about metrics, we like to look at a, a time period and see where things change and if that looks, um, if, if that's a red flag, how things are changing or it looks normal or, or it looks exciting, uh, like contributor growth, a lot of new people showing up over a period of time, then uh, you can always look into the details of why that might be. So when Georg mentions context, I'm usually the person who always tells people that never ever look into a metric or trend without knowing and learning about the context because without the context that's really just a number and the number being higher or lower how do you know which one it should be and I think I will let others ramble now <laughs> <laughs> thank you Aldico. Hello everyone, I'm Dawn Foster. So I work in VMware's open source program office as the director of open source community strategy. I'm also involved in a whole bunch of other things kind of related to that. So I'm on the board of Open UK, I'm um, co-chair of the CNCF contributor strategy technical advisory group. Um, I'm also a governing board member and maintainer for, for chaos. So, um, and all of, those, all of those things kind of tie together, but my, my context is loosely um, open source program offices and helping companies engage in open source projects the right way and help make sure that the projects that we're engaged in are healthy. So that's really my focus when I'm looking at metrics is around project health. So looking at not just the projects that you know VMware kind of drives and making sure that those are healthy but also looking at the third party projects that we're engaged in and trying to find um, you know red flags and trying to make sure that we're doing what we can to make those projects as healthy as possible the ones that we especially the ones that we consume and incorporate into our products like things like kubernetes um, and so from a from a chaos perspective we actually at vmware we use we use both of the primary tools so i use i use augur personally for scalable project health metrics that we look at across all of the repositories that VMware is um, kind of driving. So the projects that we own, the ones in our GitHub organizations. And so we run the, we run metrics every month on about 125 repositories. So those are the repositories that have enough activity to make the, the metrics um, interesting. So we, we take a look at those every month and look at, at which ones seem to be doing well, which ones aren't, and sometimes we talk to projects if we have any, any questions about that. But getting back to Ildiko's point, um, the interpretation of those metrics is really important. So just because a number is going down or it's taking a team longer to reply to pull requests, 
may not be a bad thing if that team is really focused on something else that's even even more important for you know a month or two or maybe a few people are on vacation. So I really try to get people to to think about how to interpret the metrics so that we're not just you know blindly looking at ups and downs and and that we're looking long term at trends and what's what's the right thing to look at for a particular project because no no metric is perfect for any any project. And then we also do, um, my team does some health assessments. So we look in, in a lot of detail about some of the, um, both the projects in our GitHub orgs, but also third party projects. And we look at things like, um, so it's not just metrics driven, but we also look at things like like governance. Um, does it have a good governance model? You know, are we engaged in the project? Are we in leadership positions? Um, you know, we look at, does it have a roadmap? Uh, things like that. So we look kind of holistically, not just at the metrics when we're thinking about project health, but also at some of the more um, qualitative things that we, we can look at. <coughs> I will stop rambling and hand it over to Sean. Hi, I'm Sean Goggins. I'm one of the co-founders of the community and currently co-director with Nicole Hoosman. I'm also a maintainer for the Augur Project and a computer science professor at the University of Missouri. My interest in context is really just taking the chaos metrics um, in Augur and making them visible. So getting all of the data that's required to create metrics and then once you're completely overwhelmed by the volume of data and you can't, it's just blowing you away and there's so many metrics. What we're working on right now is tuning a more, I guess I'd characterize it as a data scientific approach to making things visible and making the data accessible to people who think in data as opposed to most of us who think in code. Uh, it's a different, different mindset. And uh, we pay particular attention to things like that are associated with risks, so dependencies, licensing, and trying to put some context around. So when we get to context building on the points that Bill and Don made, Trying to get some context around where the projects that you invest in or rely on perhaps have the most risk of being de-supported. So if you can identify across the thousand projects, for example, within your organization, which ones use which imports the most frequently. So which things are you most dependent on, but they're perhaps hidden. And then you can make a decision about where to invest um, that way. So part of your context is just assessing that risk perspective in my experience. That's it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So we have on the panel, we have Ildiko from a foundation, Don from a corporation, and Sean from the academic setting. So, and one thing that I kept hearing from all three of you is that metrics need to be looked at in context, and there is not one right metric, but we need to understand what we're using it for. So I'm going to give you all the opportunity if you have a question on this um, something on your mind we can share otherwise I move on with another question we have prepared. All right could you could you tell us how open source community health metrics have changed work <coughs> within your context um. That is a tough question, uh, for me at least, because as working for a foundation, we are, our sole focus is the communities. So uh, for us, it really is more about what metrics and what trends we should look into as opposed to whether or not to use metrics on the first place. So uh, in our case, it's, uh, it really is an evolution of um, how we can better understand the different communities and no two communities are the same, what metric works for one um, to, to get some insights that may not work for the other one. Like uh, our largest project is, is OpenStack, it's a large uh, open source uh, cloud platform and uh, at the peak we had thousands of people contributing to it over the course of six months, which is the, the release cycle. So uh, that is a large volume of, of data, a large volume of people, activities. Um, so there's a lot to understand there and just looking into basics like the boss factor, like who are the people who really are carrying the project on their back? Um, who are the people who are casual contributors? Who are the people who could be turned into uh, maintainers of the project and long-term contributors uh, could be turned into project leaders to, to make sure that, that the project and the community itself is balanced and sustainable. 
um, and they're really a good environment to work in. And I mentioned the project that I'm the community manager for, it's called Starting X, and we have 150 people um, contributing to it roughly currently. So it's a, it's a very different dynamic. Sometimes you feel like you almost personally know everybody um, in the room who shows up for meetings or replies on the mailing list. Um, so there you're trying to look into metrics like who are the newcomers, uh, who are the new people showing up on the meetings or the mailing list, or, or trying to contribute something. Um, how is the uh, onboarding process for them? Um, is it easy enough to join the community? Is there any roadblock that new people are facing that would prevent them from, from being able to? So um, for us and for me personally, it really is more about the evolution of metrics and, and how we are both collecting data and interpreting data at the same time. Like the visualization obviously is, is really, really helpful because as Sean mentioned, data is just endless and it, it really easily becomes overwhelming and you just feel like that you're drowning in data. If you want to, you could spend all day, every day, 24 seven looking at numbers and you may not get anywhere with them because it's just too much. Um, so really you kind of need to also go with a little bit of instincts as well, figuring out what really are those peaks uh, up or down that, that you should be, uh, should be focusing on and um, there are bottlenecks in the community that shows up that you can then use the metrics to, to understand what the underlying issue might be. And the other thing that we're also trying to do is not just look at numbers, but every now and then also do surveys and really just go and talk to people because sometimes no matter how many numbers and how much data you have, you just have to talk to the human being in terms of what makes them happy, what makes them sad, what they are struggling with. Sometimes the data will just not give you that information. Yeah, and just to, you know, to build on that a little bit, um, one of the things that, so I, I mentioned that I use Augur, and we have uh, kind of four metrics that we track for all of those 125 uh, projects. And the, the goal behind that is to give people just kind of a quick look at a few things that I think are important. Um, but and, and we're turning that into a metrics model for chaos. So I've, um, I should have a PR for that in the next next week or so, I think. But this it'll describe more detail those those four kind of starter metrics. But the whole goal behind that is to get the projects thinking about what else they need, right? Like those are just to get them started. It's a quick look. Um, but what I really want people to do is then to dig in in more, more detail. So we have another team within, the, within VMware and one of our business units um, It's a team of community managers. So they, they don't work in the open source program office, they work in the product teams. But they use um, Baturgia, they use uh, so Grimoire Lab, and they really dig into all of the details because community managers, like my, my four starter project help metrics are not, not enough for a community manager to understand their community, right? So they need something a lot more detailed. So the idea is that you know I encourage them really to dig into their particular community and see see what they need and and draw meaningful conclusions out of it. And then we have we have other teams that are doing other stuff like some some custom stuff out of the GitHub API for some specific things that they need to report out. But it has it has kind of helped the organization, and I, I see them reporting on on metrics that, you know, not, not the ones that, that I do specifically, but on, on some of the ones that they get out of, out of Grimoire Lab and reporting those up into, you know, business reviews and things, and reporting up through management about how healthy their projects are, what they need to improve. And so it's, it's, been, really, it's been really good to see people actually, actually using the metrics and then taking them further and building on them and drawing meaningful conclusions about their communities out of, out of the data. Building on what Don and Ildico said, I, I think some of the things that are happening within chaos, especially the development of metric models that are collections of metrics that are commonly used together, we, we're seeing a way of sort of bringing all that data and context to bear in a very targeted way. So uh, Don recently authored a metric model, it was called Starter Metric Model? Starter Project Health. Starter Project Health Metrics Model. So, which is, uh, you know, just these four, I think it's, it's the same four metrics you were talking about just now. So it's, it's a way of saying, okay, you have all this data and the starter health metrics model <laughs> um, can, can, you know, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's, yeah, we need an acronym. It's 
<laughs> I don't, yeah, I'm not going to parse that out up here. But so, so that kind of lets you get started, lets you see the initial context, and it gives you some really baseline metrics that you can use to sort of understand the activity levels and engagement that exist on a larger portfolio, and then decide where you drill in. So what I'm what I'm hearing from you to synthesize and probably will not do justice is once you have the metrics, there will be more questions and you can dig in and understand more. And it's not about just having metrics and having a in Germany we would call it schema F, where you just make decisions, good, bad, whatever. It's really to start understanding and digging in to the data and the communities and the, it helps to maybe validate hunches that you have about the community but also provide evidence for what you're seeing. All right, could you please tell us what uh, you think open source community health, wh where it's headed and maybe one or two things that um, we should consider in the chaos project moving forward. Since I have the mic again. Um, <laughs> I think that there's one thing that, that already started within chaos is that we are um, looking into collaborating with the to-do group and, and OSPOs. And uh, well, Don is a good example of uh, sitting, in, sitting in an OSPO and, and having that broader uh, view and sort of a bird's eye view in terms of what a, what a company needs uh, in order to figure out how to contribute to open source, how to be a good open source citizen, um, how to integrate that into their processes. And uh, I think that having, having this, uh, these challenges um, also introduced in, in chaos and, and having the opportunity to work together on figuring these things out Will be will be crucial crucial moving forward, and I'm I'm mentioning this because well I started to contribute what ooh, ten years ago something like a really long time ago um, I feel old now um, and back in the day uh, when I started I started with OpenStack and uh, we did have a dashboard uh, it was called Stack Analytics and companies were looking at you know who has the, the most comments in a repo, who <coughs> contributed the most lines of code. And what does that mean at the end of the day? Practically nothing. Uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a competition, and uh, in my view, it was kind of a meaningless competition. Um, companies had to, vendors used those numbers to show customers that, oh yes, we're contributing, even though we just moved one repo over to another namespace, and that gave us a million lines of code contribution, even though we did not really do any creative thing. So the number itself doesn't really mean anything. And if companies, as well as people are in the communities, like individuals are focusing on these kind of competitions, that will not help anybody to move forward. And at the same time, um, with supporting communities, I also see the struggle sometimes where, where people or companies just don't really understand still what open source is about. And so um, they have a struggle on the process side in terms of how to build that into their own processes. And at the same time, they don't know what metrics and, and data and trends to look at <coughs> in the open source community. Neither do they necessarily know what kind of data to look into internally, like to figure out if they are successful with what they are trying to do. Are they efficient? Could they do this better, even just in the internal processes? So I think that chaos working together with OSPOs could really move the needle on solving the challenge of really not just focusing on the open source community itself, but the ecosystem around it and those companies who and individuals who are just looking from the sidelines and you know, oh, this is healthy enough, we, we can use it. And they, they never, it, sometimes it never even occurs to them that the most benefit is if they start to participate and contribute. So um, I think that's, that's something that, that we could uh, really uh, move the needle on if we work together. Yeah, and I, you know, building on that um, discussion around you know, working more closely with, with the open source program offices, 
you know, one of the things that we've seen historically, I think a lot of us um, have taken sort of naive approaches to metrics, right? We're looking at lines of code, we're looking at commits, we're looking at, at things that are indicators of, of maybe other things, but in a relatively simplistic way. And I think, I think really the, the future is to move more into looking at things from kind of a data science perspective. So we have data scientists within the chaos community now who are working at companies like Google and Red Hat and really digging into, um, you know, really digging into the metrics and drawing into more interesting conclusions, I think, from them. And so, you know, not just the, um, you know, and not just the data scientists looking at it too, like the tools are starting to build this stuff in. So like Grimoire Lab started, is starting to, or has for a while, had a lot of network analysis functionality um, that's a part of it that I think maybe, maybe we don't use enough enough of that. You know, and Augur has some machine learning stuff built in as well that a lot of people don't really know how to use. So I think, um, I think what we really need to do is to build awareness of some of the uh, more data science approaches that we already have in the tools and then also, you know, help people learn how to use them. And I think, I think that's going to be really important to the future of the, the Chaos Project. And the only thing I have to add, I plus one to everything Don and Ildiko said for sure. The only thing I have to add when I think about the future is if I look outside of the Chaos Project, the one place where I've had the most pressure, and I think a lot of us have, have had the most pressure in the last year, is understanding the risk associated with our projects and being able to understand their software build materials and dependency <coughs> chains. And, and I think those are there are external geopolitical forces that are forcing us to think about those things more. And, and so I just that's all, that's all I would add to what Don said and what Ildiko said. Yeah, thank you. We still have a few minutes. Uh, I'm opening up to the to you all. Uh, if you have anything that came to mind, <coughs> listening, something where you you think something we need to work on or work towards in chaos, or if you have some metrics that you think are interesting and you would like to share. Yes. I have a question mainly for uh, for Ildiko and and and, and Don. Um, have you seen in, in our business, in your business, in, in similar? I'm not talking about your position or your company, but in similar companies with similar positions as yours, have you seen uh, or have you feel the pressure uh, from the mass from the management uh, leadership, from from the management management board to um, have metrics? Uh, at the point that uh, they are trying to replace uh, experts like you with metrics? Is this something that is happening in this business? Because I've, I've read that it is starting to happen in some businesses where they try to have indicators and replace the experts instead of having the, the indicators plus the experts that can interpret those, 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 those metrics and data. I don't. I don't know that I've. I've personally seen. Um, at least in, in the kind of the software context that I work in, I haven't really seen them trying to replace um, replace us with <coughs> metrics. I mean, I, I think you do see it in, in other areas, right? Like you know, there was an article around Buzzfeed is replacing some um, some writers with Chat GPT um, and getting some you know some AI written articles that then you know so the, the AI writes the articles and then they get reviewed by an editor just just the way they would if you know I was an author and wrote an article. So I've heard some 